Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. Now when the disciples and Jesus drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and other, others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. I want to make one thing clear before I start. God has always been in control. He's always been in control of the universe since it was created. Things didn't go the way he wanted them to, but he allowed for that to happen. He allowed free agents, angelic beings, human beings to rebel if that was what they decided to do. But he loved us. He loved the whole creation, and he found it very good. But we know the story. We fell into sin, and Satan, a a rebellious, angelic being, usurped our authority, authority that God had given us over the creation. And so we lost our authority. We lost largely our godly image, for we were made in the likeness of God. And of course, God intended us to rule and reign over creation, to subdue it, and to bring his life-giving spirit to everything that we encountered. But we soon encountered death because of disobedience, and death took over. God promised a redeemer. That redeemer would come through the seed of the woman, meaning it would be a human being that would restore creation to righteousness. And he would restore rule and reign to mankind. We know who that is. The promised seed was Jesus. And on that Sunday, Jesus, the fulfillment of that promise in Genesis chapter 3, was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey as king, as king of the earth. For the rule and reign of earth had become the rule and reign of our God. And that God happened to not only be son of God, but son of man. Mankind now ruled and reigned just as it was intended when God gave that command to Adam and Eve at the very beginning. And just as Adam and Eve were called to to rule and reign together, Jesus extends the rule and reign to us. For we are co-heirs with him in this creation. We're called to rule and reign with him. We are kings and queens and priests in this new age. Understand this too, that 
The rule and reign of God is much different than the people who were singing Hosanna on that Sunday thought. They thought it was going to be much like the way people ruled and reigned in their day, and they rule and reign in the same way even today, by lording over people. But it's not so with Jesus. For this is an upside-down kingdom, and in this upside-down kingdom, to be great is to be the least. To be the greatest is to be the slave of all. That's exactly who Jesus became, the slave of all, laying down his life for you and for me. For he is the head of this kingdom, and he is the greatest servant of all. And if we are to follow him, we are to be servants like him. As we trust in his rule and reign. But that's primary, isn't it? To trust in him and in all of his promises. Do you believe that Jesus not only died for you and freed you from sin and death, but that he rules and reigns over your life right now? That he's in charge of everything, for he has been made king. He has been given authority over everything in heaven and on earth, in the sky and on the land, in the oceans. He's in charge of it all. Do you trust him? When you look on that cross, you see him suffering and dying. And we believe that he died for our sins, but do you also believe that he rules and reigns? Because after he died on the cross, he also rose again and then ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of the Father, for he is our King. And he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's in charge of everything. Do you believe it? Do you trust in his rule and reign as much as you trust in his forgiveness of your sins? Do you trust that he's in charge of everything in your life and that everything that happens to you, he's well aware of and he has allowed it? Even if evil has come against you, he will use it to your greatest good. Do you believe that? For this is part of the gospel. When Jesus preached the good news, he preached that the kingdom of God has come upon you. And now he rules and reigns over all things. He's in charge and he loves us. And it's time to hear the word and believe. Amen.